So, all right. Next question is a Bible question. Somebody wanted us to all answer right. this. Uh, that their their question was uh, about Genesis chapter one verse twenty six, and in that verse, uh, the it says that God, when He creates human beings, uh, makes this statement. Uh, it's the story of the creation of man, woman, and the whole thing. And He says, "Let us make man, mankind, in our own image." And uh, and their question was, "Why does God say us?" Mm. Why does he say our image? It sounds like he's talking to someone, but if it's just God, who's he talking to? So, uh, Nathan, you want to jump on that one? Well, uh, we we answered. Yeah, we did kind of answer. We this we've earlier. answered this question a little bit before. I don't know. I think we might have even referenced this verse uh, when it was Maybe just Jason and I on the podcast. Uh, the good uh, podcast. The good, the That's good, right. The good old days. <laughs> the best, endless, the, endless the, be, the best episode. Uh, but yeah, we talked. to Someone asked about the the Trinity, the Trinity. and the fact yeah. that God is. Uh, three persons, one God, and um, and so we talked about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and so when God in this sense is saying, let's make a man in our image, and man or mankind, humans, in our image, it's a reference to the fact that God, in and of himself, even though this sounds contradictory, is communal in and of himself, that he is... Uh, three persons. He is a community, although he is still unified in one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, anyway, that's that's yeah. the answer I have as far as in reference to the who is us. It's a reference to yeah. God as uh, the Godhead, as some would refer to it. And here's an interesting little caveat to that answer mm -hmm. that I can throw in there because um, this... And this goes back to when the book of Genesis was written, and this all this all comes from an old professor that I had back in Bible college. In fact, Ed had the same professor. Years and, before you had him at a different college. A long time before. Mm. So he's been around a long time. Great guy. Uh, his name is Dr. Hooks, and he taught both of us Old Testament. And uh, he brought this point out to me that I'd never heard before when I was in Bible college because, as we know, when Genesis was written, um, there was no Trinitarian view of God. At right. that point, this was this was in the days of the Jewish Judaism, and they they viewed God as one. They did not yet understand Him as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and so mm -hmm. the author did not write with that intent because mm -hmm. he didn't have that mm -hmm. view of God. Um, and so there's this their their ex explanation of it, which would, as the one you just said, would come along later when we mm -hmm. kind of when Jesus finally revealed God to us. We go, oh, that's what that was about. But he said their uh, interpretation of that was that in their day, uh, royalty and kings uh, many times would refer to themselves uh, as, oh, as us. Yeah. Uh, he called it, uh, I can't remember the, the term that he used, but it was something about uh, the majestic uh, yeah. we or something yeah. like mm -hmm. that. The royal we. The, the royal the, we yeah. or something. So when people of high status or kings mm -hmm. would refer to themselves, they I would also remember him saying that now that you, hey, you, so that. you listen more than I, I did. Listened. I'd forgotten that, yeah. but I do remember that now. But I remember because I had always inter gotten the answer that Nathan just said, and then when he brought that out, he was like, so, you know, there's another way to look at that, and that's how they would view that back in those days or before Jesus came along. I thought, okay, well, that makes sense. And he said, in that context, it makes perfect sense because God was majestic. He was ruler of all. He's the creator of all. And so he would have used that majestic sort of language. And so they didn't find any uh, problem with, with God referring to himself as a plural right. uh, because it was just sort of accepted in their day. So that, that was how it, that sort of was explained to me. And another interesting idea off of this, this is not an answer to the question, so I didn't want to say it in the last part, but I think it's interesting, is on the image of God part, and I just recently heard this, I think, I thought it was very interesting, is also that um, at that period in time, rulers often referred to themselves as the image of God. Hmm. And oh, they would, yeah, yeah, they yeah, would yeah. say that I am the image of God or my children are the image of God. And that one important part of, them use, of, of, the, of the biblical writers and God using this language through the biblical writers of all people are made in the image of God mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. all of us were designed with the purpose to co-rule this planet alongside. Cause that, so it says in Genesis, you know, 126 is make, God, you know, make man in our image. And it says, let him rule over the, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the birds have of the air over. and the fish mm -hmm. and have dominion. And this idea that we are supposed to be taking care of one another and taking care of this mm -hmm. planet and taking care of that. And that that's somehow inherent to our image mm -hmm. bearing of God. Yep. That just as rulers would refer to themselves as the image of God, that God says, no, it's really all of us, men and mm -hmm. women, not just men, but yeah. men and women made in the image of God, made to, to co-rule. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't often co-rule. We... Uh, 
we do our own ruling and mess yeah. everything up. And yeah. so. Good. Good answer to that. That's, that's an aspect I haven't thought of either. Thanks, Nathan.